Hey y'all, welcome back to Mama Loves Manga. So, today I'm here to talk about a series that I just binge watched, or binge watched. Today's chat is about a series I just finished binge reading, and that is The Delinquent Housewife by Nemu Yoko. I read volume one of this series several months back, like sometime last year, and I enjoyed it very much. I went into this not really knowing how the series was gonna go because the um because when I picked it up only the first volume was available. Typically I prefer to read series that are already completed partially so that I could go and do some research and read reviews and see if it's something that I would actually be interested in but every now and then I find a series that is fairly new or new to me and I pick up like one or two volumes and I start from there and I see how I feel about it as we go. I picked it up when there was only one volume available and from there I just waited until the final three came out. Anyway, I have some thoughts about this series so let's get into it. We will start with the art. The artwork is pretty nice and actually I would say it's fairly standard. The art is nice. It's not necessarily outstanding, but it's well done. Moving on to the story. When I picked up this first volume, of course I read the back of it, and I'll read that now so that you'll have an idea of how the series was first presented. Toru Komukai and his bride-to-be Komugi move in with his family just until they find a place of their own or that was the plan, until Toru suddenly leaves for a long-term business trip overseas, leaving Komugi to fend for herself on her in-law's turf. While Komugi is pretty, considerate, and appears to be an ideal housewife, the truth is she doesn't know how to do a lick of housework and can't cook at all. Also, she has a secret past as a member of an all-girls Bozo Kusu. Also, she has a secret past as a member of an all-girls Boso Zoku biker gang. The only member of the family to learn these secrets is Dai, Toru's younger brother, and he helps Komugi keep up appearances until she can learn how to hold her own as a domestic goddess. I thought the focus of this series was going to be Komugi learning how to become a perfect housewife and learning how to um, fit in with the family. I thought it was going to be more so of, um, I thought it was going to be more of a found family type story where, you know, Komugi gets to bond with her future husband's family. Maybe it's a little bit rocky at first, but over time they learn to love and respect and appreciate each other. And that is, sort of what this story is about, but there's a little twist. Over time, Dai, the little brother, the younger brother, develops a crush on Komugi. It's kind of cute, because it is something that I can totally see happening in real life. However, I would say at around volume three, I started to, to give a little side eye to certain events, but thankfully by volume four, things were fixed. There's so many things that go on in this story and I ended up loving how everything worked out. Even the relationship between Komugi and Dai, I was very worried that it was going to go a different way, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and there were a couple of things that happened that made me go, no girl, no. If you are someone like me who is not a big fan of age gap romances that involve minors and adults, then you will be happy to know that this, this is not that series. <laughs> the issues are dealt with very well in my opinion. This story is full of humor, but it also has moments that kind of hit you in the chest. Um, there, was, there was one scene between Komugi and her mother-in-law that low-key made me tear up just a little bit because I, mm, I could just feel Komugi's like hurt. <laughs> It hurt, it, it hurt me. I do feel like the story was a little bit rushed, but what can you do when there are only four volumes? And one other complaint I have is that Komugi's husband-to-be is gone throughout the majority of the series, and there is an explanation for it, but in the beginning, when he first, when he first goes off on his business trip, 
there's almost, how do I explain this? In the first and maybe second volumes, it seemed like maybe the mangaka wanted to make a mystery out of Toru's business trip, maybe wanting to add some sort of suspense to it, like making us question whether or not Toru was going to actually come home. I thought that was unnecessary. I totally feel like they could have just written it like, hey, he's on a business trip. I actually like all of the characters in this. They're all really funny and they have their own personalities. The only person you really don't get to know is Toru, who is the husband to be. It seems like his only purpose throughout the story was to bring Komugi to his parents' house so that she could have this experience. So yeah, Toru doesn't even matter. Could have been anybody. <laughs> I like Komugi. I think that she is funny and smart and probably my favorite character out of all of them. She has a past, but she's willing to grow and change and learn. I enjoy all of the characters, even the side characters have their place and their personalities. They're all pretty well written. I think that there is character growth for all of them. Um, there, oh, I forgot about Grandpa. <laughs> the Grandpa character in this series is ridiculous. He's pretty much your typical, like, <laughs> pervy old man and it, honestly, it's funny. <laughs> if he weren't, like, so old and, like, frail, I'd probably hate him, but because he's so old and frail, it's, it's funny. <laughs> One other thing I want to say is that all of these covers are absolutely adorable. Komugi is a cutie pie. And I love her. So would I recommend The Delinquent Housewife? I would. So that's all I have to say about The Delinquent Housewife by Nemu Yoko. In the comments below, let me know if you've read this series and what you think about it. And on that note, I am gonna go. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. <laughs>